If you're really unlucky, he'll just like keep jumping at you and eventually pose a threat. But he'll almost always start an ice beam before doing anything like that. Okay, got pretty lucky that time as well. just keeps cooperating. Sometimes he'll jump away after he lands in and like throw a snowball at you. It's uh that's kind of the worst that can happen. Like if he just keeps jumping or jumps away. But it's not too bad. If you are starting to get low on health, you can start actually dodging his stomps and just swing at him in more safe ways. Might be worth practicing uh, like actually dodging his attacks regularly, but it's probably not necessary. Just staying on the right side will almost always work. He can also uh, like throw icicles at you, even while you're like waiting over here and they have no chance at hitting you. He'll just stand over there throwing icicles and they won't even reach. Just uh, just keep waiting. If he does that, he'll jump at you eventually. Okay, that's Blazak. Hercules, I already talked about in the new Arcadia Shrine. Easy fresh. You're going to want to heal up. And if you're not doing RNG manipulation, boss order doesn't actually matter. And I'm not going to be talking about the RNG manipulation after those first two, just because it gets a lot more involved than what I want to cover in this tutorial. So, yeah, we'll just, we'll just go in the same order. You can go to Maha before Anubis if you prefer. Doesn't matter. But let's start with this. Anubis can give people some trouble, but he's actually really easy once you figure it out. So, start of the fight, he's always gonna like switch sides, just get some jump slashes in. You can actually hit him with one while he's off screen. Like, the reference I use is a bit after his scepter gets to the bottom of the screen like that. You can just jump over and hit him. And if he throws his scepter like this, and starts moving across, it's really easy to avoid. Just move away from it and get some more jump slashes in. Be careful about not hitting him with spin slashes, which can happen if you start your attack too early before you're actually in range to hit him with the jump slash. Because that will only do two damage to him and it will actually mess up the cycle in ways like, you won't do as much damage in a cycle as you should, and the fight will end up taking an extra cycle because of that. If you're having trouble with it, you can hold down while you do the jump slashes, so you'll not spin. Because you will not spin when you're holding directional down. You only do extended jump slashes, and the regular jump slash, of course. But if you're confident with the spacing and the timing of the attack, you can just do regular jumps and it will hit him for four like normal. He summons these zombies on every cycle other than the first. Just don't worry about them. Like, they take forever to kill. I think they've got like 10 health or some such. Takes three full swings, so don't think you can just like get them out of your way real fast with a swing or two. Just ignore them, avoid them. If you get caught by them, you can mash out pretty quick. Just, just leave the zombies be. Get some swings in. If he summons more, it can get kind of tight at the end of the cycle, especially if he summons them on the the opposite side of the first set. But you've got time. Just 
wait for his iframes to run out, and the cycle. Not a big deal. There are some uh, pretty stylish things you can do on these pillars. Like you can jump off one side and then get to the far side and jump off that one as well. It's kind of tricky though. And a lot of times you'll get hit by the spikes on the top for your trouble. Totally worth it though if you can pull it off. Oh. Yeah, this is a good pattern to show off. So... He summoned the zombies on the left side when he came up, and now he's throwing the weapon at you. So it kind of like, kind of takes up all your space over there. So if he's throwing the zomb, or if, if he's throwing his weapon while the zombies are up, you can just get out of there to the left side and finish him off, or you can try and get underneath him to the right. I think that's the only pattern that that's like really noteworthy for being difficult to avoid. I generally prefer to go over to the left and then just catch him as he comes back. Oh, while we're at it. I'll show one other cool thing you can do with uh, the pillars. I don't know exactly what the deal is, but if your spacing's just right, sometimes you'll like ride up the pillar as it comes up without getting hit. I don't know. I think it might be pixel dependent, like or pixel perfect. It's uh, it's very rare. I got it for a little bit there. Didn't ride all the way up. But. I definitely don't recommend going for this one, since your odds of getting it versus the chances of just getting hit by the spikes, they're not good. But it's something. The safest way to deal with the pillars is to just get on the opposite side before they even come up. doesn't work with the last set, of course, you'll have to do a wall kick there. Either way, though, it's... they're easy-peasy. As long as you're not going for the double wall kick, then it's kind of tricky. Alright. Maha. This is... I would say the most difficult of the first four bosses in this set. He's got uh, quite a few different attacks and he can hurt for a lot. The spin slashes method is not advised for a beginner. It would take quite a bit of practice to master that. So instead we're just going to be using regular jump slashes. Now extended jump slashes do five damage instead of four. So you can actually have a more efficient fight by using those instead of going in for regular jumps. It is a bit more tricky on the spacing though. Like You need to start the attack early and then move into him with it, or else you'll just hit him with the regular jump slash part of the attack, like that. So if you can uh, get this down, it'll make the fight go a little more efficiently, but it's not essential either way. If he rolls, you want to move away from him a bit, and then go over him and slash, spin slash as you go through. That way you clear out any bombs that are going to be in your way. And I would recommend being on the right side of him after he rolls at you. That way he's very, like, he's very far on the right side of the screen, and that's important because he will never do the attack where he swings around on a rope if he's this far away from the center. So, his options are now limited. He'll only do three different moves here, whereas he will do four if he's near the center. 
And the swinging thing is a huge pain. Like it, it stops you from being able to attack them for a while, and it can be tough to avoid. So, going over and then under. That way you've got them on the right side. That's what I recommend. They'll keep rolling sometimes, and again, you do the same thing. You just go over and under. If he punches, shoot a green shot at his face. Oh, wow. I didn't actually expect him to do the swing there. I guess he's got more leeway than in the regular fight. You will, like, push him back a bit every time you hit him, so it is possible for him to get close enough to the center like that. That's the best pattern. It's when he just like walks at you and does no attack. You can just hit him repeatedly. The fight just ends up being very uh, automatic once you get used to the three different attacks. Occasionally he'll do the swing, just go up and and hit it. Really not too bad with some practice, but like I said, he does a lot of damage when he hits you, so make sure to practice him. This room's kind of tricky just because of how much stuff there is. The approach I like to take is uh, a big full dash jump all the way over to this last step, dash off that, and then jump over this guy. If you're far enough forward, you'll get through everything without getting hit. If you're too far back when you do the jump over the Pantheon, you'll get hit by that shot. And of course, if you're too far forward, you'll just hit the Pantheon. But it's not too difficult to get the spacing down. And then we want to go over here, but there's a turret on the wall. So you'll see I'm charging a shot. As I land over here, I fire the charge and a lemon, because they have four health, not three. And then you can jump across safely. You do want to wait a moment after firing the shots before jumping across. If you try and go too fast, he's going to get a shot off and it'll snipe you out of the air. Oops. Just don't wait so long that like the other stuff in the room starts attacking you. Just stop a moment, then go. Extra life up here. Recommended. You can just jump off this wall just to get across. If you're not confident with that, you could just do a regular jump across and do a little more wall climbing on the far side. But it's not too tricky. Just dash over, turn back, wall jump. Okay, now we get the Guardians. They are quite a bit trickier than the other bosses. Let's start with Leviathan. I think she tends to be one of the trickier for uh, like a new player. She also happens to be one of the trickier for uh, optimized speedrun, but that's a side. Interesting thing with Leviathan, you'll know she's bobbing up and down while this text is here. And you'll notice when I clear the last bit of text, she stops moving. And that's where she starts the fight from. So where she is at the start of the fight will depend on when I end this dialogue. Like if I start here, she'll be really low at the beginning. Which could be nice because it means I can dash up and hit her with 
double hit slashes like that. If you just mash through the text right at the start, she's going to be all the way up there, and you won't be able to reach her with anything other than a jump slash or a third hit, neither of which are optimal. So the visual, well, first of all, there are two boxes of text. So you get through the first one, and then wait on the second. The visual reference I use for when to end this is right around here. Yeah, probably the, the most clear reference is like the red triangle on her forehead lining up with that line in the background. That's around when you want to clear the last text. And then she'll be starting around there. So wait, wait there. And this is a good spot because you can reach her with the two hit slashes. And after this first attack, she'll swim along the ground and start her next attack very low as well. If you wait too long on clearing the text, like if she's down there, you'll be able to reach her at the start of the fight. But for her next attack, Apparently there's more leeway than I realized. But if she starts too low, then on her next attack she will swim up and be out of range. Like that. And then you can't really reach her very effectively. So you want to get the timing down it's not too tricky, but just to have a, a clear visual reference to look at. Now this is a situation where lemon cancelling not a bad idea, since there's no risk of actually hitting her with the shot. She's too high up. So you might be able to get more slashes in than you would be able to with walk cancelling. You still need to be like relatively good at timing when to fire the buster and when to start the next combo. So it's not necessarily a better choice if you don't have it down. Another thing with Leviathan, she's very uh, high up relative to where you are, which means if you start or if you do your two hit combo too quickly, you'll only hit her once like that. The reason is the uh, the second swing of the combo. It only has a hitbox that high very early in the attack. After a bit, the hitbox shrinks a lot, and it won't reach her up there. So you need to start the second hit later than you would on other bosses, generally. Or else she will still be invulnerable while the while the second hitbox is going through her. Oh yeah, don't get too far to the right, or else when you get hit you'll be damage boosted off the ledge here, and it's just kind of a pain to have to get back out. And then you can just get a bunch more hits in as she's doing these attacks, and then she'll swim away. You can try and like jump up and catch her with hits, but you're probably just better off staying on the ground and waiting for her to come down. It's kind of a messy fight if you don't have uh, like really smooth strats, but you should be able to get through it pretty consistently if you can do good damage on this first set of attacks. You can just swing at these icicles as they're coming down. They're not a huge deal. 
After you get damage boosted back by this first attack of hers, you will generally have to move forward a step or two to be in range. Oops. Not too bad with practice. Heal up, and then let's look at Phantom. Phantom is very dangerous. Some of his attacks can come out pretty quick. And, uh... You can do quite a bit of damage with them as well. The Shuriken throw is the best thing he can do. You can just take the hit and get a lot of damage to him while he's on the ground. They do 4 damage though, so you might want to just jump it. Now this is the, the most annoying and slow attack he can do. If you hit the illusions, you can get him out of the attack faster, but you risk taking a hit from the... like when the illusion explodes. So you need to either have really good spacing on your jump slash, or you can like fire a buster shot through. And that's generally quite a bit safer. Yeah, you can just shoot it from a little ways away and it won't bother you. It might not be very clear on the stream, since I'm only at 30 FPS, but it is uh, possible to tell which is the real one very clearly. You don't want to hit that one or else he just keeps doing the attack and it's slow. I mean, it is kind of a safe way of getting damage in, since you can just keep hitting him for a while. But I think it's better to just end the attack early and get back to the stuff that you can actually do some damage on. And then the other thing he can do is he'll just, like, charge at you and swing his sword. That can be pretty dangerous, depending on your spacing. Let's see if I can get him to actually do it. Yeah, that attack. It comes out pretty quick, and I can just, I can just catch you off guard. A lot of times you'll interrupt his attack if you happen to hit him right as he starts that. Which is pretty nice since he goes into a recoil and you can get some more free hits in. But if you're not like timing the attacks just right and spaced in just such a way, you've got a pretty good chance of being hit by a few of those. Sometimes he'll just spam that attack, he'll just repeatedly charge at you with a sword. Which can be really good for doing damage but it can also be pretty bad in taking a bunch of damage. So you might want to play it safe and like stay far away and then you have time to react to it and catch him out of the swing or jump over him and hit him on the far side. That's up to you. If you've got plenty of health to work with though, I would just stand close as he's landing and just go hamburgers. At the, at the end of the fight, he'll self-destruct. Just stay far away if you can. If he's like in the center of the room and you can't get very far away, you can just dodge the explosions. Not really a big deal even if you do get hit by them. Even if you die to it, it'll cost you one of your lives, which would be unfortunate, but you still get credit for completing the boss. And then just Taking the hit and losing some health, of course, isn't a huge deal, since you can refill mostly. Unless you're really low. Alright, Fefner. Fefner has a bunch of different stuff he can do, but if you're really close to him, 
he only has a couple things that he will ever choose. So he can either run up and grab you and throw you in the air like that, or he will do like a, a shockwave like that. The shockwave is what you really want to see, since you can just stand there and attack him a bunch. Whereas when he tries to grab you, you need to spend time jumping over him. With the shockwave, the best way to deal with it is to just dash underneath him. Though you can jump it if uh, if you think he's going to go for the grab and you're not sure. You can just jump over him early. No, I'm not going to cover the RNG manipulation on death. I don't think it's worth trying to go for for a beginner. So you can kind of just wait around, see what he's going to do, jump away from him if he goes for the grab, or jump over him, or dash away, dash underneath him if he goes for that. Really not too bad of a fight once you get used to those two attacks. Since, like I said, those are the only attacks he's going to do if you're in close range. Now, if you're at far range, he starts doing a bunch of other nonsense. Like jumping like crazy, shooting fireballs in all kinds of angles. Sometimes shooting multiple fireballs. It's, it's a mess. Just stay close, get used to dodging those two attacks. Harpuvia. A few different ways of approaching this. So, Harpuvia has no random elements, at least when fought properly. So, it's really easy to deal with consistently once you get it down. What you want to do is catch him out of the air with a spin slash like that, so he doesn't get iframes. That can be kind of tricky though, and it's not necessarily a huge deal. And every time you knock him out of the air, he's going to land and do this 3-4 slash combo, and then go back up. And you can just... You can just do this forever. But that's pretty slow, so let's look at some better options. The optimal strat is to just kind of like stand in his face and tank hits while you combo him down each time. And you can kill him before he will kill you if you do it well. Safer option is to wait until he lands and then jump to the far side. That way he will only hit you once as he goes up. But it's kind of slower and it's still kind of dangerous if you mess it up since it's hard to get as much damage in with that strat. One thing you would probably try doing is take a damage boost off his body, which does a lot less damage, but I'm not sure how consistent that would be. I think this is the best option, is just stand in his face and tank hits for a while. if you can pull it off. It's quick and easy. If you do need to start dodging his attacks, it's it's not that difficult. You could probably do a compromise where you only dodge the last hit. If he starts doing other stuff, it might really throw you off. Just try and get back into a good rhythm.
One tricky part, if you do decide to go on the right side, is uh, you don't have very much space to work with. So you have a, a high chance of bumping into them. But you can actually turn that to your advantage, since bumping into them directly does not do very much damage. It only does two damage. Whereas if you get hit by his attack at the end of the combo, that does like a billion. Is that four or five? Okay, it's just five. Yeah, just four damage. So, it's not completely unreasonable, but it's still quite a lot. You can just uh, jump to the far side, get some hits in, and then bump into them to guarantee that you only take the two damage. And that will pretty much guarantee that you can kill him before you run out of health. though it might be a little bit slower. Just make sure if you are doing that option where you jump to the far side, wait until he's like really landed before jumping across. If you jump over right away, then he will turn and face you. If you don't like fighting him in this really cramped space, you could let him uh, like move out a bit into the room. You could even uh, do that where you actually push him the other direction with your slash. Like that. And then you can fight him in the center of the room. That might be a lot more comfortable for some people. Alright. Now, if everything's gone according to plan, you can have charge attacks after clearing Harpuya. They aren't necessarily required at this point, but it is nice since you can kill this guy with a well-placed charge slash. If you don't have it, you can uh, fire a bunch of shots at him, and that will cause it to stop, and you can try and sneak through. Or you can just take a damage boost off him. With this one, you can dash underneath it, both of these. and then just jump across to here. As long as you're not too low, you don't have to worry about these spinning things. And then I would recommend just clearing these pantheons with a green charge shot, so you can take them all out at once. It is possible to jump directly up onto here, but it's kind of tricky probably better off just killing that guy, get everything out of your way, shoot these. Again, big groups of pantheons, kind of a pain to deal with the saber. Just, just shoot them and move on. Now, if you do need to farm health, this is a good place to do it. You can just jump in, shoot them, go back. You'll have to kill that Pantheon on the way back. Get any health you need and then move on.
This is a pretty tough fight. He's got a a bajillion different moves he can do, and he just kind of like moves around a lot. It's kind of tough to predict where he's going or what he's attacking. I would recommend practicing this fight a lot. Just getting a good feel for the different stuff he can do. And getting used to moving in and getting hits in when possible. He's got like four different forms, each with different attacks. So, in blue form, he'll just kind of like shoot generic purple blobs at you. They're not too tough to dodge. They just move in straight lines. Uh oh. He'll also do this every now and then where he like charges up and does some special move. It's generally not too dangerous. And you can just go up and interrupt him out of it. These lightning orbs are a pain since they're homing. So you can get kind of stuck. I think ice is my least favorite since he'll shoot these, uh, yeah, those things. I think my next shotgun ice nonsense. Oh, when he does this air dash move, if he's low to the ground, just dash underneath him. It's a lot easier and safer than trying to like get to a wall or I don't even think you can clear him from a jump. But yeah, just dash underneath him. So it's like he shoots those ice things and you can avoid it pretty easily. But then it shatters and comes back and you need to jump over the shard. bad spot for a safe state. And it takes forever for it to come back. Like here, you keep expecting it and then it doesn't actually... the shard doesn't come back until you're like trying to do something else and it catches you. There's this charged ice attack. Big ol' ice beam on the ground. If you can't interrupt him out of it, then your best bet is to just to a wall or something. But if you're staying aggressive and hitting him constantly, he generally won't get opportunities to do his charge attacks. In fire form, he, he shoots fire. Yeah. It has like weird curving patterns, so you can uh, dodge it by either moving far away or jumping over it while close to him. But do not try and jump over it from far away or else, it, as you can see, it will not work. He can also fire at you from the air. With all the forms, when he's firing at you from the air, the best place to be is like almost directly uh, underneath him. Just uh, far enough away that he won't land on you. Now you can try and like get him into a wall, and you can combo him there if your walk canceling is pretty good. And you can get a lot of damage in pretty quick. You won't be able to combo him infinitely. He will break out of it. Let's, uh, let's go back to the start of the fight. If you let him touch the ground or hit him too many times, he will break out. But it is a pretty good way of getting some damage in. It's kind of a, a balance you've got to strike is when you want to be charging him aggressively and when you want to convince him to get into the corner.
make sure to practice this fight a lot. Be very comfortable with moving around and getting him where you want, getting the attacks in. It can be a pretty tough fight, but it can also end really quick if you're doing a good job of getting hits in. And then we've got the final boss. This guy can really wreck you if you're not very comfortable with the various ways of moving around and dodging stuff. But it can also be so free if you are confident. He's only got like two real attacks. And once you can recognize them and avoid them, you're in pretty good shape. You should have charge attacks by now, if you didn't have them earlier. Unless you didn't get uh, four EXP glitches. If you only got three, you might you might be in some trouble. Without charge slashes, it's, it's a little difficult. But you can just use regular jump slashes in the same way. You just need to get a bit closer to him, and it's going to take longer to kill him like that. Again, like with Maha, using extended jump slashes is preferable. Since it does 5 damage. Oh dear. Wasn't expecting that last one. There's a, there's a few different things you should be able to do here. First of all, you want to be able to hit him with a charge slash and then get back to th the platform or like the wall you are already on. Like that. You just jump off it, hit him with a charge slash, and then go back to the wall. And you can do that repeatedly if you've got it down. It's just a matter of timing like how high you jump and understanding the movement of the platform. Like if it's going up you want to do a relatively big jump so you can get back to it whereas I'm going to get hit. If it's moving down, you just want to do like a, a short hop. You also want to know how far you have to go off the, the wall kick before you hit him. Like if you're using charge slashes, you barely need to move anywhere at all to reach him with the attack. And that makes it a lot easier to get back if you're just going out a tiny ways and then coming back as opposed to going like all the way into his hitbox and then going all the way back. Another important thing in the fight is to keep track of where the platforms on the side are. Like, know which one you can actually reach if you were to jump at them. Like if I go for this one on the right here, I'm just gonna get hit and die like a goofball. You want to know which one's low in the cycle and which one's high. They're always at like opposite points. There will always be one that's within reach. And just keep track of which one it is. For the yellow beam attack, that's the harder one to avoid generally. Especially if you're staying on a, on a side like this. Since he aims at you with those. So if you're staying in around the same area, he's always going to hit you. What you want to do is, when he starts the attack, move to the opposite side. Wait till he starts, then move. 
don't move too early or else he'll adjust his aim. So just wait, then move. Wait, then move. After two attacks, he always switches back to dropping onion rings on you. They, uh, they're not too dangerous. You can normally mash out of them before anything too bad happens, but it can be kind of a pain. The best way to deal with them is to just move forward very slowly. They drop where you are when they spawn, and then they just go straight down from there. So, if you move around the platform like crazy, because you're panicking or whatever, they are going to drop all over the place and you're going to have no idea where they'll be. Whereas if you just gradually go across the platform, they'll just all drop right behind you. It's also worth noting that you can't hit him with attacks while he's doing this. You have to wait until he's most of the way through the attack before going up. Another thing to note, hitting his body only does one damage. His attacks each do four or five damage. So if you're in a situation where you're not entirely confident that you're safe, just jump into his body with a with a charge slash. And you'll be fine. So it's like, that fire's still going to be there after this attack. I'll just hit his body and fall down instead of landing on the fire itself. that was an example of not like going for the right side. I had been moving to the left as the young in rings were spawning, but the uh, the platform on the left was going to be really high up on its cycle, so I realized I was going to have to go back to the right, which is where the young in rings were falling. So it just threw me off and I ended up falling in a pit like a doofus. So in this situation, like you can see the one on the right's really high up, the one on the left's pretty low, and he's about to start the young in rings attack. So it's important to predict ahead of time which platform I'm going to want to go up on. And I think it's going to be the one on the right. Actually, no. It was on the way down. Oh, hold on, I, I lost my spot. By the way, that fire lasts forever. So, like I said, bump into his body if you think it's still going to be there when you come down. Or just get back to the side platform. Okay, so the one on the left is going up at the moment, the one on the right is going down. By the end of his onion ring attack, I expect the one on the left to have gone up and come all the way back down. So that's the one I'm going to want to get up on at the start of the next cycle. So I want to make the onion ring spawn on the, uh, the opposite side. I don't want them to be in my way. I'm going to go over here and start moving to the left. This is kind of a tricky spot since I started that a little late. I think the first onion ring was already spawning in the center when I made my decision. Normally you'd want to know ahead of time. 
Yeah, I think he sends out more rings when he's at low health. I've never actually tested that. I just kind of eyeball when he's done. Oh, dear. You can always afford to get an attack in as he's starting a cycle. Like, you're never gonna get hit by an attack if you just go up and get a hit in right away. And then you can see what he's doing and react. So he throws lightning, or whatever that is. You move to the opposite side. In this instance, the platform's kinda high up, so you might just wanna wait a bit. Throws lightning again, move over. Onion rings. And then you see I'm on the side where the platform's conveniently available after the attack. Easy finish. That time I was too late in starting my attack at the start of the cycle, so it was not safe. That time I was just slow in getting away from the lasers. If you're on the uh, the very edge of the platform at the end of the fight, you'll teleport over, and it's pretty cool. Just uh, try not to die after you clear the game. Timing ends when you lose control of zero. So, without pressing anything at some point here, yeah, he just turns around and starts walking over. That's where time ends. There. Technically, you could probably end your speed run over here, like, as long as the point where you lose control is like, before you die. Like, you could hit time there and then die, and I guess it'd still be valid. I don't know. I've never tried submitting a run to the leaderboard with an end like that. Do so at your own risk. If you're feeling really dangerous, you can do a dash into the teleport, which looks pretty radical. But the timing stuff, since you just need to get it like right as you hit the edge. Sometimes you'll get the teleport and die. Uh, we don't really care about in-game time, but even if you ended a run like this, you could just uh, continue and pause and check your in-game time, 8.41. But yeah, in-game time is not really a big deal in Z1 running. We use real time. There's actually a setup for getting the teleport. If you do a full wall jump, off one of these platforms before they disappear. You'll always land on the edge. You can do the teleport from the left side, but it's not as cool since you don't go as far. Alright. I think that's it, unless someone has any questions.